What is the connection between a fear-based identity and hearing the words, well done? For someone with a fear-based identity, the focus is always on negative things. What am I afraid of? How can I stop something from happening? How can I avoid getting in trouble? It's all negative. How to prevent something from happening? But behind it all is always that longing that, oh man, if ever someone would just say, well done, good job. That's the longing. When I come to the, the Word of God, and I represent people who come from a background of a fear-based identity, reading God's Word can very easily lead us to the feeling that we're not good enough. And it should. There's a certain aspect of that that is so healthy to admit that we are not good enough to earn anything with God. But when we're talking about ourselves as children of God, and we're thinking, what does it take to actually feel confident that when we are relating to God, there's a sense that He is saying, well done. This is standing out to me because I'm meditating on the prophet Jeremiah's life. And in chapter 1 of Jeremiah, the way it begins is with God asking Jeremiah, what do you see? And when Jeremiah tells God what he saw, God says, well done. His words are something like, you have seen well. We could say, God is saying, Jeremiah, that is a very good observation. What would it be like for that to happen to us? That we are in the Word of God. Can you imagine that? You, you get up in the morning and you open the Word of God and you feel that the Holy Spirit is hovering over you, waiting to hear you say, what do you see? That's a, that's a remarkable thing for me to think that when I get up in the morning and I get into the Word of God, that what matters to God, the first thing is, Monty, what do you see? This is amazing. So, so I can look at what I'm learning right now and tell God what I see is that when Jeremiah told you what he saw, you said, well done. And what that does is it starts me on a beatitudinal journey. A journey through the beatitudinal valley. And what that means is, God blesses us by bringing us into a state of poverty of spirit. Blessed are the poor in spirit. I can come to God's Word anytime, and I can read anything and I can be sure that I understand how it's supposed to apply to me. And I can say, God, I don't know you like that. And that's a blessing. It's a blessing to say, God, I don't know you as the father who tells his sons, good observation. So then, the, the next step down into the Beatitudinal Valley is, blessed are those who mourn. Are you able to see the poverty of spirit in your life and to let yourself mourn? For me, that would be God. The fact I don't know you this well as the father who says to his sons, well done. That breaks my heart. It attaches to so much grief about how I have longed for these things. And then the next step down is blessed are the meek. And a meek person is somebody who realizes 
what I'm looking for can't be found in me. It's found in Jesus. And so Jesus, I submit to your authority. I have no hope in myself. I'll never get this if I'm left to myself. And so Lord, I submit to Jesus. I submit to my savior because he's the only one who can bring me into the experience that he himself had with the father at his baptism, at the transfiguration. God's saying, this is my beloved son. With him, I am so pleased. Oh, how I long for Jesus to teach me how to know his father like that. And that brings me down to rock bottom in the Beatitudinal Valley, which is blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Do you see this? You can't be there. You can't experience that blessing till you're starving, till you are dry with thirst. When we get to that place where I look at this scripture, I look at how many times God asked people, what do you see? I, I think of John in Revelation over and over again. He said, and then I saw, and then I saw. And all through the narrative, we're drawn into this photo book, this coloring book of glorious revelations and each page is, and then I saw this, and then I saw this, because what we see is actually very important to God. So when I can say, God, I, I don't know you as the Father who is pleased with his sons. Something in me is broken. But Lord Jesus, you know what it's like to have your father tell you, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And it's obvious that this is where we're going as your children, that day when one day we will appear before the throne glorified and our father will say, well done, my good and faithful servant. But right now, if we will allow ourselves to hunger and thirst for this righteousness of being so attached to our Heavenly Father that when we read the Word of God, we feel like He's asking us what we see. And at the end of our time with Him meditating on His Word, just telling Him, Father, Look at what I see and we'll know he's so happy that we saw it because of the way it brings us to know him better than we've ever known him before.